Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ron, and today I wanted to give you a few tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your DJI Spark, and hopefully get you started in making your footage look more cinematic and a lot more professional. Now some of these tips may be new to you and some you may have seen before, but they're worth covering because they're still relevant in 2019. Now I edit my videos using Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud 2019, but if you're using something else, I believe the principles still apply, it's just the steps to accomplish them will be slightly different. Okay, so first tip, before you launch your Spark, have your shots in mind. Do a little scouting ahead of time, if that's possible. Know what you wanna shoot and the type of shots you want. You only have about 12 to 13 minutes of actual flight time with the Spark, so make sure you're making the most use of your time and know your shots before you take off. I would also recommend having at least three batteries on hand so you can be sure to capture the footage you want. One or two batteries may not be enough, and I personally, Well, that's no good. One or two batteries may not be enough. Also remember in colder weather, your flight times may get reduced because the cold actually impacts your intelligent flight batteries. Okay, second tip. Make sure your gimbal movements are slow. This is really important. Don't make any sudden movements with your gimbal. I would recommend going into the DJI GO 4 app settings and slowing your gimbal speed to something close to four, maybe five, from its factory default settings, which are much higher. Remember, the slower, the better. I use very little gimbal movements in my videos because I find it distracting when watching the videos. If you look back at your videos where there's a lot of gimbal movement, I think you'll notice the same thing. There is a time and a place to use small gimbal movements like a reveal shot, but you need a wide open area and scenic shot to really pull it off. Also because the Spark only has a two axis gimbal, its gimbal movements don't produce the best shot. So again, use sparingly and go slow if you're moving that gimbal. Okay, tip number three. If you're familiar with your Spark specs, you know it only shoots at full HD, which is 1920 by 1080, and it only shoots at 30 frames per second. There's no options to shoot any other frame rates like 60 frames per second, 240 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, which would be nice. Now, some people feel changing your frame rate in post-production from 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second gives you a better and smoother video quality. But that's not been my personal experience. Sometimes changing the frame rates in your Spark can make the footage just a bit jittery. However, if you want to experiment with this, simply highlight your footage, right click, modify, go to modify, interpret footage, and you can change this from the existing frame rate of 29.97, click where it says assume this frame rate, make that 24 frames per second, hit OK. Now when you drop any of that footage into your timeline, you're going to see that it's now showing as 24 frames per second. And you can see that here as well for the, for the new clip. So you're going to see it as 24 frames per second. So now all your footage is interpreted at 24 frames per second. And again, when you drop it into the timeline, that's how you're going to see it. The reason many like 24 frames per second is because most box office movies and films are produced at 24 frames per second. And over time, our eyes have become accustomed to associating movies and TV shows with that 24 frame per second rate. Again, you can play around with this, uh, but after YouTube compression, I don't notice much of a difference in my final videos. However, you can take this one step further and slow the footage down just slightly. I suggest by 20%. So now you have your footage on a 24 frame per second timeline and slowed down to 80% of its original speed. This can really smooth out your footage and give it a more cinematic look. 
If you slow down your footage more than 20%, you can also introduce something called optical flow. Optical flow lets you take footage shot at a low frame rate and slow it down like it was shot at a higher frame rate. It basically achieves smooth speed and frame rates by interpreting missing frames. Again, try it. It does make a subtle difference that can make your footage look more cinematic. Okay, fourth tip. If you're using text in your videos for something like titles, make sure you use something pleasing to the eye. There's a, a bunch of free fonts out there that you can download from sites like thefont.com, Font Squirrel, Font Space, and other sites as well. I'll put some links to those sites below if you wanna check them out. Find fonts that match your style and incorporate those fonts into your videos instead of using the default fonts that often come with your, when you purchase your PC or Mac. There's a ton of great styles out there that can really spice up the way you present your videos. If you want to take it a step further, you can start using animated titles in your videos. There are some free ones out there that you can download, but the ones I'm currently using, I bought off of Matty Apoya and I'll link a, uh, leave a link below to his site as well. Um, if you're not familiar with him, he works with Peter McKinnon. All right, let's put two minutes on the clock. Pull a Peter McKinnon. All right, my apology for that. I've been editing for a couple hours and I was getting a little bored. All right, back to the video. Okay, fifth tip. Make sure you're using adjustment layers instead of just editing directly on your Spark footage. This way, if you have to make changes or re revert back to original Spark footage, it's extremely easy to do. You can just delete existing adjustment layers and create new ones. In the panel here on the left, just right click and choose adjustment layer, or you can click on the icon here and select adjustment layer here as well. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. Add some black bars to the top and the bottom of your footage. You can do this by downloading a .png file you've created in Photoshop, or the way I do it is adding these to my adjustment layers using a crop feature, and then just changing the top setting from its default value to a value of eight, and then the same to the bottom, giving it a value of eight as well. Okay, and if you're still hanging in there with me with this video, I appreciate it. I'll give you another bonus tip. Uh, make sure you're using good quality music on your videos. You want something that matches the mood or the vibe you're trying to establish. I've been using mu music from a company called Epidemic Sound. You'll find the link below in my uh, descriptions of the videos as well, so you can check those out. Uh, Epidemic Sound is a great source for music. It does require a paid subscription, but if you're doing a lot of YouTube videos or posting to social media, I find that they're a great source of music and I never get, uh, never have to worry about any kind of copyright or infringement strikes. Okay, I actually gave you more than five tips, but there are a ton of other ways to improve your video quality and make your footage more cinematic and professional looking. I'm just starting to scratch the surface here. The DJI Spark was first released in May of 2017, and I suspect it's one of the highest, has one of the highest ownership rates throughout the world, uh, although I can't find any stats online from DJI to support that. It's an easy entry level drone and very reasonable in price for its features. Checking the DJI website, it's currently priced around $400 for the Spark control, uh, controller combo, about half the price of its next cheapest drone, which is the Mavic Air, which I also own, currently priced around $800. So I know it's been a while since I've done any Spark videos, uh, but based on the feedback I get on this video, I'll do more if there's an interest. That being said, leave comments below and let me know what you're most interested in so I can put together more videos to help you guys out. I do enjoy sharing the information and sometimes it's just a matter of knowing what you're interested in. Remember, I also have links to all my gear and some recommendation uh, products below in this video, so please feel free to check those out uh, to help support the channel. If you're an active subscriber, I do thank you. And if you're not an active subscriber, I hope you'll think about subscribing. 
You can also follow me on Instagram. And until next time, happy flying and enjoy your spark.